The functional unit of the kidney is called the nephron and its job is to filter out nitrogenous waste. So nitrogenous waste builds up in the body because we cannot store proteins. Of course we can store excess uh, glucose and sugars and carbohydrates that we eat in the form of glycogen and fat. Of course we can store fats in the form of fat, but we can't store excess proteins. We use protein to break it down to amino acids and put it back together as, as proteins, but any excess amino acids in our body or excess proteins need to get removed because we can't store them. So it goes through the, the liver to be made into ammonia and then uh, ultimately into a waste product called urea and it's the urea that needs to be filtered out of the nephron. So let's talk about the structure and function of the nephron. First of all we start with capillaries and the capillaries make a big ball called the glomerulus. It's a big ball of high pressure and nearly everything gets filtered out of the glomerulus and gets captured by the Bowman's capsule, which is the start of the nephron. In this process of the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule, we've got the process of filtration. And nearly everything is filtered out of the blood. So what's filtered out? Water, sodium and other ions, glucose, urea, and amino acids. All of these things are filtered out of the blood, really big things like proteins and uh, blood vessels, they stay behind, but everything else gets filtered out and gets caught by the Bowman's capsule, which is the beginning of the nephron. Then after that, we've got these wibbly wobbly area here called the proximal convoluted tube. This is the area where all of the important stuff gets reabsorbed back into the blood. So um, all of the important things here actually leave the proximal convoluted tube and actually get reabsorbed because these blood vessels wrap around the nephron. So all of the important stuff gets uh, moves out of the nephron, out of the proximal convoluted tube and into the blood. So what is it that, that gets reabsorbed? All of the important stuff, much of the water, much of the sodium, the glucose, and the amino acids. So these are amino acids that the body will then use to make proteins. What gets filtered out or stays in the, uh, the nephron is the urea. Let's talk about the next part. After the proximal convoluted tube, we then go into the loop of Henle. Just before we do, so the process here at the proximal convoluted tube is called selective reabsorption. So then the next part is the loop of Henle. And the loop of Henle is all about concentrating the urine. How does that happen? Well, the descending limb, this is part called the descending limb of the loop of Henle, it is permeable to water. So water is able to permeate out of the loop of Henle. And the ascending limb is permeable to sodium. Sodium is actively pumped out of the nephron. Now, of course, water follows salt. So when the sodium is actively pumped out, water follows out of the loop of Henle and gets reabsorbed into these blood vessels that are wrapping around the, um, the loop of Henle. So the process that's happening here is concentration of urine. Right, and now we're almost finished. After this, we have got another convoluted section called the distal convoluted tube. And then after that, we've got the collecting tube. Again, we've got blood vessels that wrap around it. 
because this is where any final water can be reabsorbed. And in fact, this is the part that gets uh, regulates the amount of urine, uh, the amount of water in your urine, depending on how dehydrated you are. Because this is where uh, antidiuretic hormone works. Here and here. Antidiuretic hormone. That's the hormone that's involved in regulating the amount of water in the urine. Because when somebody's dehydrated and we want to keep as much water or reabsorb as much water as possible, it makes the distal convoluted tube and the collecting duct more leaky to water. More water exits and gets reabsorbed into the blood vessels. When there's uh, a lot of water in the blood, the amount of antidiuretic hormone decreases and the distal convoluted tube becomes less leaky, so more water actually exits out through into the bladder. So there you have it. We've really got three parts. Filtration, selective reabsorption, and then concentration.